The movie opens with Cairo Sweet, an 18-year-old girl, narrating what it's like to be an adult. She lives alone in her house since her parents, both lawyers, are permanently overseas. Cairo finds solace in writing and yearns for love to alleviate her loneliness. She mentions meeting a teacher who's also a writer. Cairo walks into class where Jonathan Miller, a literature teacher, is already seated, an hour before class starts. She shares that she lives in Level Hill, leaving Jonathan impressed. He hands her a list of books they'll cover in class, and Cairo reveals she's already read them all, further astonishing him. Her friend Winnie joins them, revealing this is her second time taking the class. Cairo's stomach growls, prompting Winnie to suggest they grab food. After they leave, Jonathan inspects the books Cairo brought to class. His colleague Boris walks in, inquiring about the book Jonathan's reading, which Boris snatches and begins reading aloud. Jonathan takes the book and heads to enjoy the biscuits Boris baked. Boris discovers Jonathan's book from Cairo and teases him, revealing she's the only one who's checked it out from their home library. Beatrice is engrossed in her work, oblivious to Jonathan's attempts to get her attention. He shares his encounter with Cairo, mentioning her eclectic reading tastes and how she borrowed his book from the library. Beatrice playfully mocks him. As Beatrice receives a call from Amy, Jonathan excuses himself to put on some music. The tension dissipates, and they share a drink, reciting lines from Under the Roofs of Paris. The moment escalates into dancing and kissing. Beatrice's phone rings again, interrupting their encounter. She rushes off, leaving Jonathan alone. Boris joins Jonathan on the court, lamenting his terrible weekend. Gazing into the nearby woods, Boris jokingly warns Jonathan about potential ghosts, claiming the plants feed on the souls of the dead. Cairo emerges from the woods, greeting the duo. Boris and Jonathan pepper her with questions, and Boris offers her biscuits before departing, teasing Jonathan. Jonathan asks Cairo if she isn't frightened walking alone through the woods. Cairo tells Jonathan she's the scariest thing in the woods. Boris walks away, and Winnie stops him, teasing. Cairo watches from afar. Winnie asks Cairo if she's jealous in a playful tone. At Cairo's house, Winnie convinces Cairo to let her give her a make, saying she can be both smart and hot. Cairo struggles with a Yale essay question about her greatest achievement. Winnie suggests experiencing something worth writing about. Winnie confides in Cairo about wanting an older man for her first time, specifically Boris. Cairo asks if she's serious. In class, Cairo notices Jonathan staring at her. He asks her to stay after school. Boris visits Jonathan's class, asking about Beatrice's book. Jonathan invites him to dinner, telling him to shower first. After Boris leaves, Jonathan puts on music and dances. Turning around, he finds Cairo giggling. They sit on the couch, and Jonathan invites Cairo to Sally Bunny's poetry salon, urging her to attend the coming weekend. Jonathan wanted to see Cairo because of her story about a reluctant spider. He recited lines from it, and they discussed the spider's symbolism. You're talented, Jonathan said, offering her a midterm jumpstart. Write a short story in the style of your favorite author. It'll enhance your Yale portfolio. Cairo praised Jonathan's book as grand and tragic romantic horror, quoting lines from it. It was my first writing, Jonathan said. I haven't written recently, since marrying and teaching. Cairo challenged him, you're not inspired. Winnie joined them, and they headed to dinner. Winnie, their waitress, exchanged sneers with Boris. Orders delayed, Beatrice complained. Winnie offered a complimentary drink. Boris chuckled at Winnie's jab at Jonathan being a boring teacher. Beatrice recognized Winnie as Cairo's friend. Discussing Cairo's writing, Beatrice told Jonathan, you're a better teacher than writer. It's not that you can't write, they assured him. You stopped writing and chose teaching. On Saturday, Cairo visited the poetry place, where Jonathan hoped to find her. She asked if he knew everyone, and if the gathering was like group therapy. Elliot recited a play, captivating the audience. Afterward, Jonathan and Cairo stepped outside. Did you think it would be bad? Jonathan asked, smiling. Yes, Cairo replied, giggling. On Monday, Cairo brought coffee to Jonathan and Boris. Boris offered her a homemade biscuit. You should sell these, Cairo suggested. I'll help, along with Jonathan. Jonathan received a text from Beatrice, planning a weekend getaway. Cairo and Winnie visited Jonathan's class, finding him rushing to leave. Approve my midterm writer choice? Cairo asked. Winnie teased Cairo about her interaction with Jonathan. Boris agreed with Cairo's biscuit-baking idea. 
Help me, Boris asked. Winnie requested Boris's number. Cairo borrowed his phone to call herself. Jonathan discovered Cairo's phone in his bag. She called, asking him to drop it off. In the rain, Jonathan arrived at Cairo's house. Come here, he said, pulling her close. Cairo watched TV, replaying the moment. Jonathan sat with Beatrice, who apologized for canceling their trip due to work. Beatrice received Cairo's midterm assignment. Jonathan stepped outside, reading Cairo's story. On Monday, Cairo waited in Jonathan's class. He greeted her coldly. Choose another author, Jonathan said. This story is inappropriate. Cairo explained, it's about us. Jonathan insisted, write a new story with a different author. Cairo protested, stop talking to me like a stranger. What do you mean? Jonathan warned, rewrite it, or I'll have to fail you for the midterm. Cairo lashed out, tears streaming, your writing is bad. You're a nobody, impotent, and mediocre. She stormed out, likening the heartbreak to a car crash. At home, Cairo drank and cried with Winnie. Jonathan returned home, telling Beatrice about his terrible day. Beatrice offered him a drink and asked to see Cairo's story. After reading it, Beatrice teased Jonathan about Cairo's description of him. Cairo asked Winnie to distract her. Winnie texted Boris, Cairo's drunk. What are you doing? Jonathan recites Cairo's story, Beatrice takes his hand, and they nearly make out until Boris arrives. Winnie confides in Cairo, I want Boris to like me, to sleep with me. Cairo coaches Winnie to text Boris, I'm with Cairo, doing what girls do at night. Beatrice notices Boris smiling at his phone and asks who he's texting. Boris replies to Winnie, go to bed. Cairo gets angry, directs Winnie to remove her shirt, and they fake make out for Boris. Cairo takes a photo, and Winnie sends it to Boris. Earlier, Cairo sent her story to the principal. Beatrice receives a call from the principal's office and passes it to Jonathan. Boris abruptly leaves. Jonathan learns Cairo sent the story and informs Beatrice. If Cairo convinces them something happened between us, I could lose my job, Jonathan worries. Beatrice asks, did something happen between you and Cairo? That's very dangerous. Do you know what you're doing? Cairo skips school, and Winnie looks distraught. Winnie asks Jonathan if he's seen Cairo, but he coldly replies, no. Cairo and Jonathan were in the principal's office, answering questions about their relationship. Jonathan explained, I gave her an assignment early. We talked about literature. Cairo added, we met often. He helped me because I was talented. But Boris, Jonathan's friend, asked, do you love Cairo? Jonathan said no, but Boris argued, you don't see the line, so you cross it. They fought, and Boris left. Jonathan told his wife, Beatrice, I'm suspended. They argued, hurting each other's feelings. Winnie visited Cairo, asking, what's happening with Jonathan? Cairo said, I'm testifying against him. He underestimated me. Winnie threatened to testify against Cairo, but Cairo had evidence of Winnie's secret with Boris. Cairo said, this is my greatest achievement. The results were clear. Jonathan lost his job. Boris and Winnie parted ways. Cairo cried when she saw Jonathan. Cairo thought, this experience changed me. I'm now a hero, 